But first, last night's game with Deflate Gate behind them. Tom Brady and the Patriots picked up where they left off in the Super Bowl. Tom Brady finished 25 of 32 for 288 yards and four touchdowns with three of those going to Rob Gronkowski. Here's Brady after the game. Yeah, it was a pretty special night, so uh, I was excited. Our whole team was excited. You know, it's a, uh, you know, we haven't had one of these games in a long time, so uh, it's always fun being out there and getting the opportunity to go play, and, uh, you know, we took advantage of it. Okay, Stephen A., watching this game last night, do you think the Patriots are capable of repeating as Super Bowl champs? Well, obviously they're capable of repeating as Super Bowl champions. They're the reigning defending Super Bowl champions, okay? So we all know. I mean, they didn't lose everybody. They lost a lot of holes. They have a lot of holes on defense, but you still have Tom Brady. You still got Rob Gronkowski, which we warned the Steelers about coming into this contest. You still have Bill Belichick as your coach. So because of that, definitely there is a capability to win the Super Bowl again. But I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't see a team right now that couldn't be exposed, that couldn't be knocked off. I'm paying attention to what I saw from D'Angelo Williams for the Pittsburgh Steelers. This is not Le'Veon Bell we're talking about. This is D'Angelo Williams. And what did he rush for, Skip Bayless? Mm -hmm. I believe it was like 127 mm -hmm. yards rushing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was an impressive performance yep. by him, no question about it. I saw the Steelers moving the football up and down the field. Mm -hmm. I'm disgusted with Todd Haley. Even though they were moving the football and doing things well, Todd Haley... I know he's a good offensive mind. I'm not trying to act like I'm not trying to engage in hyperbole and act like he should be fired or whatever. I'm just saying that he is a natural irritant to me because he always, 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 as a, as a Dodge Steelers fan, he is always somebody that rakes my nerves. It's opening drive. Everybody's looking at the New England Patriots. I understand they gave the Steelers, they won the toss and ultimately gave the Steelers the ball first. And the Steelers are marching down the field. And what does Todd Haley do? He ruins everything because he tries a trick play involving Antonio Brown. They lose yards. It ruins their drive. They score nothing. And once again, against the New England Patriots, the Steelers end up starting off as a de at a deficit because you know the second Tom Brady gets the football, it's going to be some trouble for the Pittsburgh Steelers as it has been in recent years. He has just done what he wants, when he wants, how he wants against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Todd Haley evidently is oblivious to all of this, has no clue about this. So goes out there and instead of being rolling with what's working and being relatively conservative and understanding you do not play with this team, especially with this weak secondary we have on the defensive side of the ball for the Pittsburgh Steelers, which is just abysmal as far as I'm concerned. You don't make that kind of call. It ruined everything as far as I'm concerned from that play. I said, even though I picked New England to win the game anyway, I said, right there is why the Steelers going to lose tonight because you don't make that kind of mistake. Having said all of that, Rob Gronkowski obviously looked big time. Tom Brady was sensational in the first half. I think he completed like 15 of his 17 passes. He was absolutely sensational, no question about it. And you just knew from the time Tom Brady led them out the tunnel mm -hmm. that it was going to be a special night. The final score was considerably less you know, less than I thought it yeah. would be. I thought the Patriots would drop 41. I thought the Steelers would still be able to put up points in bunches, which I still believe, by the way, had they not messed up that first drive. But in the end, they were not going to win this game. And to answer the question again directly, I think the New England Patriots have some things to be concerned about because of even though D'Angelo Williams is no backup, he is the backup in Pittsburgh. And for him to run, as effectively as he did yesterday and for new england to bend a lot didn't break but bend a lot in giving up some big pass plays i think that defense can be exposed and as a result i think there are some teams in the afc that can take them out when it counts most meaning the playoffs and preventing them from going to the super bowl but they're still the reigning defending Super Bowl. So champion. you did not see a potential Super Bowl winner on the field last night. Well, I'm just saying, I just no. think, listen, you have Tom Brady. Even the way they played last night, you could still end up winning that way. It's just that I think you're easily beatable compared to what you were last year. Really? Based on what I saw. Easily beatable. Yeah, okay. Compared to what I saw last year. Okay, first of all, I'm going to give you props for one very good point. The strategic turning point in that game was in that first drive when Todd Haley inexplicably went to a, 
a, a, a wide receiver pass, left-handed Antonio Brown. I don't know what they were thinking because as a Patriots supporter, I was a little nervous at that point because it looked like they were rolling because all the obvious plays that he had called had all gone for chunks of yardage. Yeah. I give you that. Now, I could sit here and I could nitpick to pieces the New England Patriots that I've already picked to win this year's Super Bowl, to repeat as Super Bowl champion. Okay. But I'm not going to do that because I'm going to boil this down to one key point here. I'm going to try to get this through your head one last time, right here, right now, just before week one on Sunday, when we have the full Sunday slate. As long as the New England Patriots have number 12 at quarterback, Thomas Edward Patrick Brady, number 12. As long as they have that guy, they can beat anybody, any place, at any time. They are extremely capable of repeating as Super Bowl champions this year. You, you can pick them to pieces, you can flaw them to death, you can flay them, and you can, you can tell me this, that, and the other, but this man gave you another masterpiece last night. This man is an NFL treasure. And I'm going to say this one more time. I want to publicly thank Judge Berman for having the guts to stand up to the National Football League and to put Roger Goodell back in his sorry place and to free Tom Brady so we could see that last night on national television. I think even you had to appreciate what you saw well, last first night. Of all, first of all, we all appreciate Tom Brady, the football player. There's no question about that. Secondly, I don't think it took the judge courage. He doesn't work for the NFL. He doesn't work for the Patriots. He doesn't work for... I, I thought he... Excuse me, I, he's a the, federal judge. The NFL judge. had home court he's, advantage he's a, in that case. A, no, no, they had home court advantage because the belief was mm -hmm. that the courts are management friendly, mm -hmm. which they are. But the judge itself, a federal judge, the league has absolutely positively no dominion over him. So it didn't take courage on the part of Richard Oh, I think Berman, it did. You know, to, to to sit there and usurp Roger Goodell's supposed authority and insert Tom I Brady think it took back into huge backbone. Yes, it not. did. It, it, yes, it did. Listen, you know it, it did. did. You're not if you're a federal judge. Is <laughs> yeah, all I'm when, to when, say. when the whole you world know, well, is predicting that Roger you know, Goodell is going to steamroll yeah, yeah, Tom but the, Brady, but the whole world isn't the judge overseeing okay. the case, nor is he a federal right. judge that has no obligation to the NFL. It didn't take. I'm just saying, you're throwing out the word courage. Okay. That's all, all right, so to back say. to football. Mm -hmm. Enough Thank of you. that. Thank you. You know, uh, y you can have your bad man, Aaron Rodgers. You can have Andrew Locke, as in Locke, first ballot Hall of Famer, Andrew Locke. You can have them. Right here, right now, still the best quarterback in all of football is number 12, Tom Brady, at age 38. I'm sorry. He put on another show last night. Nobody can operate an offense more smoothly. Seven out of 11, he went on third down. Nobody throws a sweeter, nicer, more accurate, more catchable football than Tom Brady throws. 12 times he threw it at Julian Edelman, 11 of them were caught. That's Julian Edelman, a former quarterback in college, drafted in the seventh round. Are you kidding me? That's your go-to receiver? He's making a star out of Julian Edelman. No disrespect to Julian. Love him. Love his trash talk because he backs up every word that he spews at those DBs. So I, I love what I see. But do you realize the New England Patriots got away last night with starting three rookies in the offensive line, including an undrafted free agent from Georgia at center? That's right. They got away with it. It has a lot to do with who your quarterback is. It has a lot to do with who the Steelers' defense okay, is right well, now, too. You, you can make that case. You think? But, but how about little little Dion Lewis has been out of football for two years and he starts and plays the whole game for the New England Patriots last night. Little 5'9", 195 pound Dion and I thought he was pretty good last night. Where do they find these people? How do they do this? It has a lot to do with who you have at quarterback because you can always trust that Tom Brady's going to throw it accurately to somebody. And Gronkowski, by the way, has a coal monster now at tight end in Scott Chandler. A coal monster at about six feet, seven inches tall. You better look out. And, and all you teams that want to trash talk about, oh, all you got to do is, is rough up Gronk at the line of scrimmage and you'll knock him off his right. Are you serious? So I thought for a while the strategy was, let's we're trying to, to deke him here because we're not going to cover him. He thinks we're going to rough him up. We're actually not going to cover him. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so he shredded them oftentimes when nobody was covering him. So my point is, I, I told you yesterday, little Malcolm Butler, the Super Bowl hero, 
he is going to start turning into a star this year. And I thought, even though the numbers scream that Antonio Brown had a great game last night, nine catches for 133 yards in the late touchdown, listen, Malcolm Butler played his little tail off last night. That, that's the hardest receiver to cover in pro football as far as just chasing him around. He had him in solo coverage, it seemed like, two-thirds of the time. So Malcolm Butler, I thought, played very well last night. He showed you his ability. The, the problem is he just got to get his hands up and catch the football. He should have caught the last one or at least knocked it down. And a whole lot of people lost a whole lot of money because of that one throw into the back of the end zone with whatever it was, two seconds to go. Sorry about that, Brian. But the point is, uh, just a little inside joke, but the point is I, I, I know they have some flaws. But I saw the makings of another Super Bowl team that will start coming together, and I'm boy, I'm telling you, you shouldn't bet against this bunch. Well, I'm saying year. to you that let's not let's let's not you know get carried away simply because of the Steelers' defense. Let's call it what it is. Their secondary. I mean, you got Dick LeBeau, he's gone. Keith Butler's your new defensive mm -hmm. coordinator. He and Mike Thomas are supposed to have their fingerprints on this defense, but we haven't seen that yet. This is just the first game of the season. Okay, you got Ike Taylor. He's experienced. He's gone. You got Troy Palomalo. He's experienced. They're in transition. They're in yep. transition. Yep. Everybody's talking about William Gay and, you know, two of these boys and, and Timmons, and I'm like, I'm just looking at them, Shazier and Jarvis Jones, and I'm just saying to myself, I need to see a defense that shows up. I didn't see a defense that was able to get to Tom Brady as much as you would like, considering the youth on their offensive line. I think they had they like got him combined, twice. I think they, they got like a combined, yeah, yeah, I think they got like a combined five, uh, uh, start, you know, in terms of their starters. Yeah. Started about combined five games for crying out loud. You look at the Steelers defense, their secondary is abysmal. And the fact is, is that going up against that secondary, particularly if you're Tom James, forget Tom, Tom Brady, Forget about the receptions by Gronkowski and eight or nine different receivers. Did you see how open these guys were last night? Mm -hmm. You see how many defensive assignments were missed? That's what I'm saying. Obviously, it's going to get better because a legitimate argument can be made that it can't get much worse. The Steelers' defense did not look impressive. Their secondary looked embarrassing. And because of it is why I don't think you can really judge what you're going to see from the Patriots. We can all predict that the Patriots are going to be formidable. They're the reigning defending Super Bowl champions, and they still have Gronk. They've got Chandler. They've got, uh, they've got Tom Brady. They've got Bill Belichick. You've got everything in place offensively. The Edelmans, the Amendolas of the world. Everybody's there. Not Vereen or Ridley, but pretty much everyone else is there. Defensively is where I think the Patriots can get exposed. Because let me tell you one way there is to stop Tom Brady. How about keeping him off the field? which the Steelers were doing relatively successfully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you keep Tom Brady was cussing at himself last year at Lambeau Field, why? Because that bad man that he is, Aaron Rodgers, when it counted, didn't let him get the ball back and didn't give him an opportunity to get back on the field to save the day. That's what I'm saying to you. Certainly Tom Brady can be who he is, as effective as he is, as great as he is, but that's only when he's on the field. And in order to get him on the field, that defense has to show up. And they bend it entirely too much against the Steelers last night. Without Le'Veon Bell, without Pouncey to help protect mm -hmm. Roethlisberger, without Martavius mm -hmm. Bryant. Mm -hmm. So guess what? When you're going up against some other teams, particularly teams with a running game, you might be able to keep Tom Brady off the field. And that's a problem. Okay, last quick point. Mm -hmm. are, are you ready now to, to buy into Tom Brady as the best quarterback in football? No. Why not? No. Even after that? Why? I, 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 th I think that Aaron Rodgers is about to play this Sunday. I didn't see oh. Aaron Rodgers playing last night. You saw Aaron Rodgers playing last, playing last night? I didn't see him. I did not see Aaron Rodgers you playing know, last that, night. That's a good did, question I, because... I did not see that. I, I, I watched the Honestly, second half of the NFC Championship game at Seattle, and I didn't see Aaron Rodgers did, either. Did oh, what come happened? on, guys. Did, where oh, was he? You, and I remember, oh, maybe he retired. And I remember I don't the year know. before you said the oh. same thing about Tom Brady. Oh. So what? So what, Tom Brady can have a bad AFC championship game, but Aaron Rodgers can't have a bad NFC championship game, which, by the way, was against the Legion of Boom, against the, the premier Wait, defense the, in the, the NFL. The same Legion Seattle of Boom that got shredded by Tom Brady in the Super You mean Bowl? the same Legion of Boom where Richard Sherman was hurt, Earl Thomas was hurt, Cam Chancellor was hurt? You mean that defense? You mean they, you mean weren't, they, they weren't hurt in the, the NFC by, championship by, by the way, excuse they me. They were already hurt. They were, no, no, no. They got hurt then. Oh. They were really hurt in the Super Bowl before oh. the game began. Oh, so they got hurt in practice before no, the Super no, Bowl. No, 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 no. No, they got hurt in the NFC championship. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So where was Aaron Rodgers in the second hurt. half? They got hurt. QBR of All like I'm saying to you is that 12. you're talking about Seattle. 
We talk about Seattle. There's no shame in Seattle. Don't tell us to rush. We talk it. You know, you can't sit there and He's look at Seattle. Upset. I know okay. that. I'm just saying you can't look at Seattle and ignore the fact that they're yeah. an elite team. Can't do it. We're going to get into Seattle more later. Pretty quickly here, I think. You know, yeah. I just, I can't, I'm nauseated already. You're yeah. kissing the Tom Brady's wife. Forget Tom Brady. He has a tough Good. test. Stephen Good. A, tough test next week against the Bills defense. Rex Ryan always plays him tough. We'll see him against the find out. Yeah. After yeah. last yeah. night, New England is now the favorite skip in the AFC, according mm. to uh, Vegas. And I really enjoyed your trash talking on Twitter last night. Thank you. I appreciate as, that. As amusing as it could. This next one, 